From Lansing Community College, this is LCC Connect, and this is Land Stories, with me, David Seawick. Each episode explores a different topic, such as the people, business, neighborhoods, communities, buildings, and other phenomena that make up the history of our college and our region. We tell stories, and in doing so, we connect the past to the present. In the first of this series on the history of the physical presence of Lansing Community College in downtown Lansing, we explored how the campus came to be at that location, and we looked at some of the buildings, including one uh, big building that's no longer on campus, uh, a building called Old Central. And if you have not listened to part one of this episode series, I would encourage you when you get a minute to go back and listen to that. In this part two, we're going to continue looking at those buildings and how they came to be and, well, what happened to some that aren't here anymore on Lansing Community College's campus. And one building that was mentioned at the beginning of that previous episode was a building that became known as Old Central. Old Central was called that because it was Lansing's original Central High School. And the building was built all the way back in the 1870s. It was designed by a very prominent architect, actually, none other than Elijah E. Myers. Yes, that would be the same Elijah E. Myers that designed the Michigan State Capitol Building, which is located just about three blocks away from where uh, Lansing Community College's old central building once stood. And that building's not on campus anymore. It was raised in 2006, And there is now a parking lot that occupies most of the grounds where Old Central used to stand. So we're we're talking about the block in downtown Lansing that is bound, uh, sort of going in a clockwise direction, um, to the north by Genesee Street, to the east by Capitol Avenue, to the south by Shiawassee Street, and to the west, rounding about our clockwork examination of the space, we have Seymour Street. And that area, therefore, going all the way back to the 1870s, had been really the center of the educational activities in downtown Lansing. That building underwent some substantial renovations between the time that it was built in the 1870s and the time it was raised in 2006. And I suppose any building that's around for roughly 130 years uh, is certainly going to go through some major changes in its time span, and that one certainly did. When the building was built in the 1870s, it was a a very fancy-looking building, actually. It had uh, three stories of the main structure, a building that was built of brick, And then the upper floor, uh, the roof, was designed in the Mansardic architectural style. Uh, Henri Mansard was an architect that was involved in some of the building, uh, rebuilding of Paris in the time period when that city's uh, medieval core and early modern core was really raised entirely to the ground, and then uh, a new city was built. Uh, amongst it. And if you travel to Paris nowadays, you are uh, walking down avenues that bear the great redesign and rebuilding of the city in the uh, time period, r- roughly the 1870 to 1890 time period. Here in the United States, the architectural influence of Henri Mansard w- was prominent, it's so much so that we, we being Americans, named Uh, an architectural style after him, and the style in particular was the roof on that type of building. And the roof structure of the old central uh, building, when it was first built, Lansing Central High School, is really what gave it its its major architectural style distinction. And it's basically a roof structure that has uh, curved facades covered in tiles, uh, gabled and flat Um, surfaces on the absolute top of the roof, and then dormers that protrude from the curved edges of the structure. And along with a couple of other major architectural features 
on the building, including uh, a very large chimney and a turret sort of uh, copula that was also located on the roof. That building was very distinct in its style uh, for many years in downtown Lansing. And then what happened was in the early 1900s, the Lansing School Board voted to substantially remodel and uh, actually expand that building. And what they basically did was they cut off all of the uh, mansardic architectural elements of the roof line, uh, replaced it with a flat roof, and then added a couple of major wings onto the west and the east sides of the building, essentially building a new building um, around an existing structure and keeping that existing structure and integrating both together. So that is the basic frame, if you will, of Old Central as it became known when Lansing Community College acquired it. And then when Lansing Community College acquired that building in the mid-1960s, they went ahead and did some further remodeling of it, including building single-story office uh, wings onto the uh, really the east side of the building, and then adding a very common 1960s architectural uh, element some might say it was the brutalist influence making its way into the remodel of that building, uh, is a facade made of a variety of masonry and, and metal materials. And it covered up most of the windows that had been put when that part of the building uh, was built and remodeled in the early 1900s. So by the time Lansing Community College raised the building in 2006, it bore very little resemblance, very little resemblance to uh, what it was way back in the 1870s when Elijah E. Myers designed it. So what's there nowadays? What's the history behind that? Well, as it turns out, on those grounds of where Old Central once stood, not only is there a parking lot, but there are still, a, well, there is still a building that... Uh, didn't go quite back to the 1870s when it, uh, Old Central was built. That building is the Carnegie Library that Lansing once had, and it was built in the early 1900s, right about the same time that Old Central went through its major remodel. The Lansing Central High School went through its major remodel. And now Lansing Community College has a facility on campus. It's called the University Center. The University Center is a conjoining of a brand new construction, brand new from 2009 when the building was completed, with the Old Central, um, or on the old grounds of where Old Central used to stand, and then attached to the old Carnegie Library building, which goes to the early 1900s. So now, if you stand on the corner of Capitol Avenue and Shiawassee Street, Lansing Community College's uh, downtown Lansing campus, and turn your attention to the direction of the Northwest, you are looking at the 2009 construction and the 1905 construction joined together into one building that we call the University Center and is actually a building that in many ways took a hundred years to build because one wing of it was a building of its own that built in the early 1900s, and that served as Lansing Carnegie Library. The other wing of it, built in 2009, in a very modern-looking structure with a glass and masonry facade, along with the use of some other materials, including copper. So it's a very fascinating-looking uh, building architecturally, and I would encourage uh, any of you... Uh, when you're on your stroll around downtown Lansing the next time, take a look at those buildings. It's one building now, and you'll know a bit about the history behind it. In part one of this episode, we looked at urban renewal efforts and changing dynamics of downtowns in American cities going back to the 1950s and the 1960s. And as I mentioned in that episode, and we're going to explore this theme a little bit more right now here, the growth of Lansing Community College's downtown campus is in many ways tied into these trends and how they impacted Lansing. 
So if we imagine that we're still standing on the corner of Shiawasset Street and Capitol Avenue, and our direction is currently, in our imaginary walking tour, looking to the northwest. So we are staring at the University Center and the Carnegie Library, and having just contemplated uh, that building and its two halves, we are going to turn our direction now to our right. So we're still standing on the corner of Shiawassee and Capitol Avenue, but now we're looking to our right. And we're going to turn all the way around and walk in that direction down Shiawassee Street across Capitol Avenue. And about 200 yards, we're going to run into what is now known as Washington Square, sometimes called the Washington Mall, when it, we are at uh, the campus of Lansing Community College. The existence of Washington Square and the Washington Mall, as again it's called in walking through Lansing Community College's campus, goes very much back to one of those trends or phenomena of that time period. And this is the movement of pedestrianizing, meaning closing or severely limiting to vehicular traffic, downtown shopping districts in American cities. The movement started not in Lansing, but not that far from Lansing. It actually started in Kalamazoo in 1959. The Central Business District of Kalamazoo, Michigan, had undergone a lot of changes in the decade, decade and a half after the Second World War, as was true of virtually any city in the United States. And as suburban shopping districts were being built miles away from downtown Kalamazoo, the city leaders came together in the late 1950s and they said, what can we do? What can we do to stop businesses from fleeing out into the suburbs, and what can we do to get the general public to want to go to those businesses should they stay here in Kalamazoo? And the solution they came up with was really quite remarkable, given this is the era when the automobile ruled America in more ways than it's um, sometimes even uh, easy to imagine. This is the beginning of the construction of the interstate highway system. It's the beginning of the building of really an entire suburban infrastructure in the United States that was built entirely around the automobile. So what the city leaders in Kalamazoo decided to do was close off a couple blocks of one of the main uh, corridors in downtown Kalamazoo, a street called Burdick Street, Two cars. And that's what they did. And it became the first pedestrian mall, outdoor pedestrian shopping mall that was uh, conceived and designed over an existing street in the United States. Hundreds of cities around the United States over the next 10 or 15 years would do some version of the same thing, including Lansing. Around about 1970, the leaders of Lansing were looking at ways to revitalize the shopping district downtown here. And so what they decided to do was something similar to what happened in Kalamazoo with the Kalamazoo Mall a decade prior, but a little bit different. And they renamed Washington Avenue, Washington Square. And the idea was that it was part of a large square um, or looked like a large square on a map, of several streets in the vicinity, including Washington Avenue itself, that formed the retail business core of downtown Lansing. And in renaming it Washington Square, the city also went in and redeveloped part of it to be more pedestrian-friendly, including closing a bit of that street off to cars. Now, this is where Lansing Community College comes into the picture here, because this is the exact same time that Lansing Community College has embarked upon what was the most significant uh, physical plant upgrade and total transformation of the land area of downtown Lansing that the campus is on uh, that the college had up to that point committed to. And this is the construction of the Gannon Building, including the parking ramp. If you drive through downtown Lansing nowadays or walk through it, you'll see a crane 
a, a big, large crane that's been up for quite some time uh, over the Cannon parking ramp that's currently being constructed. That's a new parking ramp, and it's being built where the old one was located. The old one was finished in the mid-1970s, the same time that the rest of the Gannon building was finished. The Gannon building occupies, with the parking ramp, an entire block of downtown Lansing. And when it was built in the mid-1970s, it was one of the largest construction projects the city of Lansing had seen in years. A, a major, major project that involved excavating quite a bit of, of land, actually, and then building a multi-story building into the side of the hill that that area, uh, the topography of that area naturally has. So between roughly 1974 and 1976, the Gannon building is built. Parking ramp, uh, then the rest of the building uh, at the same time. And the completion, therefore, of the parking ramp and the rest of the building in 1976 happens at the exact same time that this uh, vision of reimagining how downtown Lansing would look is taking shape. And therefore, when the Gannon Building was complete, Lansing Community College acquired the block of Washington Avenue that ran between Shiawassee Street and Schoolcraft Street. And that is the Washington Mall that goes through Lansing Community College. And in doing so, and in closing that off to traffic, not only had LCC uh, taken what was the north end of a fairly important busy street in downtown Lansing and turned it into a pedestrian mall that bisected the growing community college campus, but they had also taken part in that trend that was sweeping the nation of pedestrianizing significant parts of central business districts in downtowns. And this is also one of the ideas that was conceived out of this idea of urban renewal or urban revitalization. And again, it's quite remarkable to think about this. We have the highways being built all around the United States. This is the time when shopping malls start to go up, which are sort of the mecca of automobile get you there shopping. One can think of any number of shopping malls in the United States in Michigan, and in our area here, the mid-Michigan region that uh, were built during that time period and certainly filled the bill. But the pedestrianization of cities, therefore, is a very interesting trend that happens during this time period because it seems to balk the nationwide trend of focusing on the automobile. So Lansing Community College's campus is, is right in the middle of that in the physical sense and in the chronological sense. And Therefore, now when we walk through Lansing Community College's campus, if we're approaching the Gannon Building, if we're approaching the Arts and Sciences Building, if we're walking into the Health and Human Services Building, any of the other structures that are on the campus, we are walking through the uh, very real long-term significance of this urban trend that goes back to that uh, post-war period in American history. So it's pretty fascinating to contemplate. And on such a walk through Lansing Community College's downtown Lansing campus, if we keep walking north, we're going to run into a building that is called the Early Learning Children's Community. And it is a early education and child care and learning laboratory. Um, it's an educational facility for young children. And that building, before it was the early learning children's community, uh, at one time held a fine arts center for Lansing Community College, and the photography program was in there too. But when you approach that building, one of the things that is striking about it is the fact that it has an angled corner. An angled corner in the sense that an old corner uh, shop might have, uh, walking through a business district of a city. And there's a good reason for that, because that building at one time was a corner shop. It was a pharmacy. That's what it was built at. 
uh, known as the apothecary building. Apothecary is an old term for a pharmacy. And it was acquired by the college way back in the 1960s. And then in the 70s underwent its renovation so it could be used as a photography center. And it was used for quite some time uh, for that purpose. And and the reason why that building is so interesting is not only because you can see that at one time it was a, a business that um, existed there, but also because you can get the sense if you're standing looking at that angled entrance to the building that that was a street corner at one time. And it was. And the street that ran right in front of it was Washington Street. And so the... Campus of Lansing Community College has had this really curious uh, effect on the area of, of enveloping or incorporating buildings that predated the campus being there into what it has turned into now. On the next episode, part three of this series, we're going to continue looking at how Lansing Community College's campus has grown through the years, and the history behind some of those buildings, those that we have not discussed so far in Part 1 and Part 2, those buildings on the campus. You've been listening to Land Stories with me, David Seawick. For more information on this program and to stream past episodes, visit lccconnect.org. LCC Connect is the official home of the voices, vibes, and vision of Lansing Community College, offering hours of original and exciting programming. Hosted by faculty, staff, and community members, LCC Connect explores our college's work in the community, important topics in higher education, and our vision for the future. Catch the vibe on 89.7 FM or online at lccconnect.org. Until next time, remember, keep telling good stories.